Good day, my name is Tian Gildenhuis and in this video I would like to discuss an extremely important subject, especially in these end times that we live in, namely, test the prophets. Because so many people are being misled by prophets all over the world. Why? Because they do not test the prophets according to the word of God. And we must see what the Bible says today so that we can know how to discern between truth and a lie. Because sometimes the line is very, very close. And if we do not know our scriptures, then we will not be able to discern what the prophet is trying to tell you or me. And we must understand Satan is walking about like a roaring lion and he wants to deceive the children of God in these end times. And we must be sober and we must be vigilant. My brother and sister, it's still all about our Lord Jesus Christ, so let us pray together first. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you in this day. We thank you, Lord. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. So, Lord, we know you're here where we're busy with this production, but you will also be there where people will be watching this video. And we pray that you alone will be glorified and exalted, Lord. We pray that your Holy Spirit will take me out of the way, that I will not be the one speaking, but that you will be the one speaking in and through me, and that we will all be willing to hear the truth of the Word of God. And Father, thank you for the authority that you have given us to say to Satan, we bind your works now. This is holy ground where people will be busy with this video. You will not steal this message from the ears of the children of God and you will leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, now we pray that you will cover us with your blood, please. We pray that you will set up your angels all around us and that every place will be a safe place where we are busy with this video. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Please take us by the hand and lead us now by your Holy Spirit. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, on this video, we're going to discuss the following four points. Number one, what is the test? Number two, prophets in the New Apostolic Reformation or the NAR as it is known. Number three, end time warnings about prophets in the Bible. And number four, what to do with prophetic words received. And all in Naomi, now I always start with this verse in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13. It says, For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge. And I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. And today you will see that we will be able to read what the Bible says regarding prophets and prophetic word. And we will be able to understand it just as it is written. Because Jesus said in Matthew 22 verse 29, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And this is even the more true regarding the prophetic words that people get. And the prophets and prophetesses going about in these end times. And people err, not knowing the scriptures, because they do not know how to test those prophets. And my brother and sister, we must understand it is always about our Lord Jesus Christ. We must always go back to what he teaches us in his word. We must test the prophets. Even though a person tells you that the Lord said to me, if the Lord said something that is contradictory to his own scripture, then it was not our Lord Jesus Christ that said that to that prophet. But we must start to learn to discern we must ask the Lord Jesus that through his Holy Spirit, that he will give us more of the gift of discernment of spirits. But we must also get to a place of knowing our scriptures. Because if we know our scriptures, we will know the power of God. The power of God in our personal lives, in our relationships, in our finances, in what he wants me to do. But we must know our scriptures. But we only will get to know our scriptures and stop erring if we enter into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you have not yet received the, Jesus Christ in your life as Lord and Savior, at the end of this video will be a prayer that you can pray to receive him into your life. But ensure that you do it with all the sincerity in your heart, because the coming of our Lord Jesus is very close at hand. We are dancing on the edge of time, as one of the gospel singers sing. We are very, very close to the end. 
you must ensure that your heart is ready before the Lord. At number one, let us now see what is the test regarding a prophet or prophetic word that is given. And we read that in Deuteronomy 18 verse 22 that says the following. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, and remember if you read Lord like that in the King James Version of the Bible, L-O-R-D in capital letters, in the Hebrew it is Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, because our Father's name in Hebrew is Yahweh. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, in the name of Yahweh, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Let's take a closer look at each part of this verse. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, in other words, saying things to you like, Thus saith the Lord, or the Lord said to me, or God says, I must tell you, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass. In other words, especially with the prophet linked a time or a date to something that he told you. For example, in three months you will have a new job or a big raise in salary. You see, so now link the two together. The prophet comes to you and he says, God says to me, or thus saith the Lord, in three months from now you will have a new job. In three months from now you will have a raise in salary. Or one year from now you will hold a baby boy in your arms. If that thing follow not, nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. So no matter what excuse the prophet then uses, if after that time has passed, if that thing does not come to be, that prophet did not speak out of the mouth of the Lord. But then you must understand, that prophet will immediately accuse you. But no matter what excuses he uses, for example, he will say, your faith was not strong enough, or you did not sow enough seed into the kingdom of God or into our ministry. And that is why the prophetic word did not come to pass. You see, they will use excuses to try and blame you instead of accepting the blame on themselves. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. And the word that was used in the Hebrew for presumptuously also means arrogance or pride. In other words, the prophet hath spoken such a word out of arrogance or out of pride. And what does presumptuously also mean according to uh, a dictionary? When you say someone is presumptuous, you mean that the person is overconfident and is acting rudely or inappropriately. A presumptuous person takes liberties. And in this instance, it means that such a prophet took liberties in the name of God. Now look at the last part of this verse. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Why? Because he has lost any credibility. He ascribed things to God which were not from God, while actually saying that God said so. So any future things, he says, will be subject to the same probability of speaking presumptuously and taking liberties in the name of God. Such a man is not to be feared at all. Why am I telling you this? Because I see so many people are afraid of the prophets. Why? Because modern day prophets are quick to quote to the people. 1 Chronicles 16 verse 22 that says, Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Thereby, scaring people who do not know their scriptures nor the power of God into submission under their self-styled authority or prophetic mantle or prophetic authority, whatever they call it over themselves. So let us now see what does 1 Chronicles 16 verse 22 actually refer to. 
1 Chronicles 16 verse 17 to 22 says, And to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When ye, that is Israel, were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. And when they, that is Israel, went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he, that is God, suffered, that means allowed, no man to do them, referring to Israel, wrong. Yes, he reproved kings for their sakes, for Israel's sake, saying, Touch not mine anointed, meaning touch not my anointed nation, Israel, and do my prophets, in other words, in Israel, no harm. It is not applicable to all these modern day prophets that have business cards printed with the name Prophet John or Prophet Tezoe or whatever on that card. That is not what this verse refers to. So you shall not fear a person who calls himself a prophet and who gave you a prophetic word which did not come to pass. Jeremiah 28 verse 9 says, The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, look at that again, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. So that's always your test. If the thing that the prophet said comes to pass, then you will know the Lord spoke through him. If it does not come to pass, then the Lord did not speak through such a person. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 2 says, And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, that is love, I am nothing. So again, for those people who are so afraid of these modern day prophets saying that they have the gift of prophecy and they understand all mysteries and they understand all knowledge, but they do not really act in the way that God's prophets should act or react, then the Bible says they are nothing. My brother and sister, we must understand the gifts of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are with us to this very day. You can go and watch my video on the baptism with the Holy Spirit, where, where I also discuss the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the thing is here, all of us who are children of God, who were baptized with the Holy Spirit, have the gift of prophecy within us. But the prophets of old were appointed by God. These modern day prophets calling themselves prophets, having business cards printed as prophets, they are not from God. Hear me today, and I will show you on this video why I say so. At number two, let us now look at prophets in the new apostolic reformation or the NAR. My brother and sister, again, I always say you do not need to believe me. Go and do your own research regarding the problems with the new apostolic reformation. You can just type in on any search engine problems with the NAR or problems regarding the NAR or the New Apostolic Reformation or problems with prophets in the NAR and you will get a lot of information. I'm just going to quote you a few quotations and I always give credit to every person whose work I use in my research and you will see it at the bottom of the slides that I use. Now this author says, Prophets in the New Apostolic Reformation are almost as important as apostles. My brother and sister, this is already pride. If they see themselves as almost as important as the apostles that were in the Bible as well, uh, that's pride. These people have been empowered to receive new revelations from God that will aid the church in establishing dominion. But unfortunately, many times this new revelation that they share with their congregations is contradictory to the word of God. According to the new apostolic reformation, only prophets and occasionally apostles can obtain new revelations. Evangelists, pastors and teachers 
cannot. You see, they are a special group of people and only they can get new revelations from God. The prophet's new revelations are crucial to overcoming the world and the success of the church depends on the apostles following through on the information prophets provide. Most of the prophecies are extremely vague and easy to reinterpret and the new apostolic reformation is willing to modify them since they set no standard of infallibility for themselves. NAR teaches there is an abundance of new revelation available today. There are going to be those in the end time generation who will have Daniel types of revelatory experiences, they say. However, these revelatory experiences are said to be a different type of revelation, a revelation that can err and fail from people whose accuracy is said to increase over time. The best of the NAR prophets are said to only be 66% accurate. Despite this, they claim that this revelation is on par with the Old Testament prophets and New Testament apostles. My brother and sister, this can never ever be. How can you say the prophecies that these modern prophets receive are on the same level or even on a different level or even on a higher level than those of the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament apostles, yet they are vague, they can be reinterpreted, they can be changed, and they are only 66% accurate most of the times, yet they say they will have Daniel types of revelatory experiences. Daniel was not only 66% accurate. Daniel was 100% accurate every time. So for these people to try and put themselves on the same level as the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament apostles is heresy. Test the prophets against the word of God. Because this is not genuine revelation, there are many examples of NAR prophecies that have failed. For example, Rick Joyner and Bob Jones prophesied in 1997 that California would soon be destroyed by earthquakes and nuclear bombs. You see specific things that they said would happen. It hasn't happened yet. People even sold houses and left jobs. So there was harm done in people's lives because of this prophetic word. Because again, the people were afraid of the prophets and they listened to the prophets. Kim Clement claimed a word from the Lord in 2007 that Osama bin Laden would be captured in 35 days. He was not. In March 2007, Catherine Brown issued a prophetic word that there would be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. The Great Recession started in December of that same year. Many prophecies are so vague they are unfalsifiable. You see, these people say things that do not come to pass, yet people will keep on listening to them and believing them, even though their prophecies did not come to pass. And I saw this quote of one prophet that said to his people, I prophesy supernatural increase to your miracle. What does this mean? This is so vague. It can mean anything. Because what is your miracle? And then what will be the supernatural increase to your miracle? And to just speak it over a whole congregation of people, how can you say that? Because God is busy with, with each individual person in a specific way. So let's say he says this to his people, and then some people do not experience supernatural increase to whatever they thought they would get. What will happen? Now read this. Prophet's Manifesto. This is a prophet in Pretoria who calls himself a prophet as well. And this is available even on their own webpage where he says the following regarding himself. We, the prophets, are part of the special elite forces of God. 
Remember I said earlier, they see themselves as a specific, special group that only they can hear from God. Only they can receive new revelations from God. And this is what this man also says. You will see I highlighted a specific word every time in yellow. I have encountered God, he says. I have seen, experienced and talked to his angels. I have seen visions that will ruin you for life. I have access to his throne and I also have access even to the voices of human hearts around me. I have seen God's calendar long before any believer. I have predicted dates and times and seasons of new births and even the death of some. I carry the words to kill and the words to shape and bring life. I carry divine preservation. Remember, Israel was preserved by a prophet and I believe he's referring to the prophet Elijah here. I carry the key of prosperity. And you see, this is also one of the key doctrines being taught by the New Apostolic Reformation. It is called the Prosperity Gospel. And I also have a YouTube video on the dangers of the Prosperity Gospel that you can go and watch. But he says, this prophet, I carry the key of prosperity. Remember that believing in God establishes you, but believing in his prophets will bring prosperity to you. Yes, there is a verse in the Bible that says exactly that, but referring to God's prophets who are 100% correct and in line with the word of God, not prophets uh, saying that they are so good and they are this. And look at all this. It's all about I and me and myself. I carry divine protection. Remember, touch not his anointed and do his prophets no harm. You see, he uses exactly that argument that I referred to earlier, that they used to scare their people into submission under them. I see what happens even in your bedroom. Really? In the occult, that is called astral projection, where people project into other people's bedrooms and can see what is being done in their bedrooms. I see your yesteryear, today and tomorrow, as if I lived it already. Your future is memories of the past to me, because I live in a realm beyond. When I touch your hand, I become you, and I receive your memories as visions. Oh my goodness! My brother and sister, what you see here is pride at its best. And this is a modern day prophet. He thinks he lives in a realm beyond. But what did the true prophets say about themselves? We read in Isaiah 6 verse 5. Isaiah, one of the biggest prophets that ever lived, said the following after he saw God. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You see, Isaiah did not say, oh wow, you see, I'm in a different class. You see, I have now seen the King, and I live in a realm beyond. Now he says, woe unto me. I am a man of unclean lips. Woe unto me. I am undone, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. This is how the true prophets saw themselves before God. And then we also read in Isaiah 20 verse 2 to 4, some of the things that God expected of his true prophets. I wonder whether the modern day prophets will be willing to do this if God asked it of them, seeing as they carry the keys of prosperity according to them. But let's see what happened to Isaiah. At the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah the son of Amos, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins, and put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, Like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years, 
for a sign and wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. I wonder if these modern day, day prophets who wear the most expensive suits, who even have bodyguards uh, around them to protect them against the attacks coming against them, who drive in the fanciest cars. I wonder whether they would be willing to walk naked and barefoot for three years if God expected it from them. Now let me quote you some words that were written by a prophet from America through this whole Donald Trump, Joe Biden inauguration, was the election won or not won, who won the election. Look what this prophet wrote before Joe Biden was inaugurated. He wrote the following. Dear friends, as many of you know, there has been a chorus, look at this now, of mature and tested prophets in America with a proven track record that have predicted Donald J. Trump would be re-elected president of the United States. I am one of them. However, we are now watching news unfold today that is saying otherwise. In fact, I believe Joe Biden will soon prematurely announce that he is the next president of the United States. Chaos will ensue. Either a lying spirit has filled the mouths of numerous trusted prophetic voices in America, and that is what I believe actually happened, yes, or Donald J. Trump really has won the presidency and we are witnessing a diabolical and evil plan unfold to steal the election. I believe with all my heart that the latter is true. So this prophet says, we have all prophesied that Donald Trump will win the election. So God has told all these mature and tested prophets that Donald Trump has won the election. But now he says, it seems as if the election is being stolen. Now my question is, did God not know, th know that? Did God not tell them that this might also happen then? If that which they received initially was from God, but he proceeds to say, you read that correctly. Donald J. Trump won the 2020 election last night and the chorus of prophets who saw into the future and prophesied it were accurate. They should not apologize, he says. In fact, in the coming weeks, many of them will be harassed and slandered. It will be nothing more than a satanic attack to rattle them and challenge the faith of the people of God. So you see, he now says the fact that they will now be slandered because they did not prophesy the truth will mean it's a satanic attack upon the prophets instead of acknowledging that the prophets were wrong and going humbly before God and confessing it and repenting of that. He says they should not apologize because it's only a satanic attack. I am prophetically warning you, this is the hour to fast, pray and stand in agreement with what the prophets have accurately prophesied. Donald J. Trump will win re-election. Uh, no, he did not. You must understand, China, big tech including Fox News and social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram are all in on this demonic agenda to steal the 2020 election from Donald Trump. Yet no prophet prophesied that beforehand. Afterwards, they now try to say that it was stolen. So did God not tell them it was going to be stolen then, if it was stolen? To be more blunt, this man proceeds to say, civil war was declared last night on American soil. The battle is going to be fierce in the days ahead, but I am confident that truth will prevail and massive scandals are about to be exposed. We are in a Daniel 9 moment. You see, again, he refers to the Daniel type of revelatory experiences that I quoted earlier. 
We are in a Daniel 9 moment where the future is seen, but yet participation is required to see its fulfillment. For all the prayer and fasting the church has engaged in so far for this election and the days we are living in, what we choose to do over the next two weeks could be the most significant in American history. My appeal to you as the reader is simple. Refuse to be the victim of fraud and deception and stand with Donald J. Trump. Do not give in to fear, but rather stand in faith and believe what the prophets have spoken. You will prosper. So he now again quotes 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20 that this other prophet also quoted that if you believe in the prophets, you will prosper. All eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Jeremiah Johnson, November the 6th, 2020. He is the author. He is the prophet that wrote this. And then I received the following from Andrew Strom, who is in New Zealand, who also is very strong prophetically. And he sent out the following. What am I hearing for America? After the Biden inauguration, a Christian from the USA asked me the following question. Hi, brother. How are you? What are you hearing for America? Here was my simple reply. I'm hearing that the false prophets that made all these predictions need to resign. Never listen to any of these prophets ever again. God bless you all. This is what Andrew Strom said about these false prophecies that went out. And they said, but they were true. They prophesied the truth. Yet they were now shown to not have prophesied the truth. And now I want to read a few things that were written by Dr. Michael Brown. A strong appeal to those who prophesied Trump's re-election. Look what this author writes. This is now after Joe Biden was inaugurated as president. January 20th is past. And Joe Biden, not Donald Trump, is the president of the United States. To all those who prophesied that Trump would serve a second consecutive term and assured us that he would be inaugurated on January the 20th, I appeal to you in the strongest possible terms. Admit your error. You see, and this is what they are not doing. They're trying to change what they said initially to say, but it's not their fault. They're being satanically attacked now. Admit your error. Take full responsibility and do not under any circumstances continue to put a false hope into the hearts of God's people. What you prophesied did not come to pass. There is not an alternative spiritual reality in which Trump is still functioning as president. Nothing is going to change in a month or a year. It's over. Donald Trump will not serve a second consecutive term. Face the facts. Be accountable before God and man. Take the hits that will be coming and humble yourself before the Lord and His people. This is not the time for excuses. This is not the time to concoct spiritual myths. And this is absolutely not the time to blame others. If you prophesied falsely, you and you alone are to blame. Maybe you did not intend to mislead. Whatever the cause, you prophesied falsely and now you need to own it. The last thing you should do is feel sorry for yourself and claim that you are being persecuted. Quite the contrary. The reality is that you have misled many. As a result of your false prophecies, Many believers are experiencing a crisis of faith right now. Who will be there to pick up the pieces? After all, they wonder, how could all the prophets be wrong? To the extent that you urged your hearers to hold on to the very end, to that extent you are responsible for bringing them to this point of crisis. Worse still, some of you issued prophetic threats to those who questioned your words, telling them they had to believe the prophets or else. And you did this 
while claiming to speak directly for God. The Lord does not take it lightly when His people are abused like this. He will hold you responsible for misrepresenting Him. So many of God's people are hurting and the world is mocking us, thinking that our faith in Jesus is just as false as these failed Trump prophecies. One young man posted online that he had been telling his family members, none of whom were believers, that Trump would be re-elected based on the words of the prophets. He thought it would glorify the Lord when Trump was miraculously inaugurated. Now, he said, he doesn't think he can ever talk to them about the Lord again. Do we realize the damage that has been done by these prophets? Now look at this one. One woman who falsely claims to be a prophet said that God has been making a list, noting who is listening to the prophets and who is not. You see, they scare the people. They want to make the people afraid of them as prophets. So this woman told the people that God is making a list, noting who is listening to the prophets and who is not. Those who are not, she warns, claiming to speak for the Lord, will lose their voice and their ministries. This is deep deception and serious spiritual manipulation. If God is making a list, it is a list of those who misled his sheep, a list of those who threatened his children if they failed to believe the prophets, a list of those who brought dishonor to the name of his son. Now is the time to repent openly, publicly and forthrightly, Dr. Michael Brown says here. All of us can make mistakes, even serious ones like this. Our God is a God of forgiveness and redemption is the central message of our faith. You can come out of this closer to Jesus, deeper in the word, godlier in character and more in tune with the spirit and to the depth of your humility. To that degree, the Lord will restore and rebuild. But you see, if these prophets do not humble themselves, if they do not confess and repent, if they stay in their pride, they are the ones who will be losing their ministries because God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, that he will also reap. But please, I appeal to you again, this author says, don't blame others. Don't make excuses and don't perpetuate any further spiritual fantasy. It's over. Now, what are you going to do? In other words, challenging those prophets that prophesied falsely. And you know, when I saw all these things, it just reminded me about this verse in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9, where it says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun because that which happened now in America under all these mature tested prophets all being proven false. The Holy Spirit also reminded me about a similar thing that happened many, many centuries ago in 1 Kings 22 verse 2 to 8. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat the king of Judah came down to the king of Israel and he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men. So here we have four hundred prophets coming together before the king. And he said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they, in other words, all 400 those prophets, said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides, that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. 
but I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And so they called Micaiah, and they said to him, the servants that were sent to Micaiah said, And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And Micaiah answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. What is Micaiah doing here? He's actually sarcastic, because he now says exactly the same thing that the 400 other prophets said. But then the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And now look what this one single prophet says. That is totally contrary to what the 400 others said. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel, and that king was Ahab, said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? But yet this is exactly what happens, you see, because this one prophet saw what the Lord told him, that King Ahab was killed when they went up to Ramoth Gilead. So he was not supposed to go up. If he listened to Micaiah, he would not have been killed. But he listened to the 400 other prophets and he was killed. So you see, what happened in the past happens to this very day. Many prophets said, Donald Trump, he will be re-elected. One or two other Christians said, no, we see something totally different, that he will not be re-elected. Yet the whole Christian world followed after these many other prophets, saying, but they all said Donald Trump will be re-elected. He wasn't. Joe Biden is the present president. So these prophets spoke presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of them. Number three, let us now look at some end time warnings about prophets in the Bible. Matthew 24 verse 24 says, and remember, Matthew 24 is all about the signs in the end times that Jesus said that will follow. For they shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So we must understand that these so-called Prophets in the end times will be able to show great signs and wonders. So the fact that these modern day prophets will show these great signs and wonders does not necessarily mean that they are from God because they are only deceiving the very elect. 2 Peter 2 verse 1 to 3 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, as we just saw in the previous chapter that we discussed, even as there shall be in the future, in other words, false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Thousands of people follow the prophets these days all over the world. And wherever we travel in Africa, whether it's in Malawi or Zimbabwe or Botswana or Namibia, I see it that the people there all love to listen to the prophets. They nearly don't even want to wake up in the morning if they have not contacted the prophet first to hear whether they can do that. So many follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. What does this mean? The prosperity gospel. 
Because remember, we've seen it more than once now. The prophets say, if you believe in the prophets, you will prosper. I even had one person once saying to me that they also had a prophetess in the family and they would always phone the prophetess before they started plowing or before they started reaping or whatever they wanted to do on the farm. And then they also, they would phone her and say, uh, what does the Lord tell you? Can we buy a new car or a new truck for ourselves? Then the prophetess would tell them, yes, the Lord says you can buy a new truck, but you must buy me a new car first. You see, this is the way. They make merchandise of you. So they tell people, if you sow lots of seed into our ministry, you see, if you sow your seed into this prophetic ministry, God will bless you and will increase your miracle, etc., etc., etc. They are making merchandise of you. With feigned words, my brother and sister. But what will happen to them? Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. These false prophets. Who are causing harm to God's people. They will stand before the throne one day. Ezekiel 13 verse 1 to 3 says the following. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man. Prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. You see many prophets, they did it in those days. Remember Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9, that which was will be again. Many prophets prophesy out of their own hearts. The prophets in America prophesied what they wanted in their own hearts. So even today, Wherever, in South Africa, in Malawi, in any other country, prophets are in many instances prophesying out of their own hearts that which they want to see because then people will follow them. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen Nothing, meaning have seen nothing from God. They are prophesying out of their own hearts, out of their own spirit. Ezekiel 13 verse 6 and 7 says, They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. You see, this is the problem. So many people hope. On the word of the prophet. So if the prophet give them hope. They cling onto that hope given by the prophet. Instead of clinging unto Jesus and the word of God. Have you not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say the Lord saith it. Albeit I have not spoken. Can you see God has got a problem with people saying. The Lord says while the Lord has not said. Ezekiel 13 verse 8 and 9. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. So who stands up against these prophets now? God himself. So it's not a satanic attack coming against these prophets. It's God himself standing up against these prophets who prophesied falsely. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and the divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. And then in Ezekiel 13 verse 17, he goes on to say, Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them this is now all these prophetesses that you find all over the world every second lady wants to be a prophetess because you see they want people to follow them because they are so clever and they hear the voice of the lord and they eventually print themselves these little cards saying god loves you prophetess so and so no Look what God said to him. Prophesy against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy against them. 
because unfortunately in many instances what is the spirit then starting to speak through these prophetesses it's the spirit of Jezebel and I also have a whole YouTube video on the spirit of Jezebel that you can go and watch but this is the warning that God gives about the spirit of Jezebel and the prophetess in Revelation 2 verse 20 to 23 Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants. And you see, this is what you must understand. The spirit of Jezebel is also a spirit of pride. And the spirit of Jezebel causes people to call themselves by these names. I am prophetess so-and-so. I am prophet so-and-so. I am apostle so-and-so. I even saw one guy calling himself, I am apostle general so-and-so. Where in the Bible did you ever see that? You can go and study all the prophets in the Bible. See if you can find one prophet that called himself a prophet. No, God called them that. They did not call themselves prophets and prophetesses. God called them that because it is an office that God entrusted to them. So these people calling themselves prophets or prophetesses, there is the spirit of Jezebel working behind such a person. To teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. This is spiritual fornication. And she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, as that one author wrote to those prophets, repent of your deeds, acknowledge that you were wrong. Don't try to make excuses. So God also says, if they don't repent, but if they do repent, then I will excuse. But if she, the spirit of Jezebel, this person having the spirit of Jezebel, and it can be a male or a female, if he repents, God will forgive. But if he does not repent, this person will be judged by God and these things will happen. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. My brother and sister, it is time that we wake up. It is time that we test every person who comes to you saying, I am a prophet of God. I hear the voice of the Lord. And though the Lord said to me, I must tell you, or I am a prophetess. And the Lord told me to tell you, you can do this and you can do that. But if you check what is said against the word of God, you actually find out that it is contradictory to the word of God. And God is not divided against himself, my brother and sister. He will not say one thing in his word and then send a prophet to say something different to you. But again, the prophet scares you into being afraid of him instead of getting you closer to Jesus. And fixing you to Jesus. You see, because that prophet prophesies out of his own heart. He wants to prosper if you give money to him. That prophet wants to fix you to him instead of fixing you to Jesus. So you must learn to discern which prophet really spoke through the mouth of the Lord. As I say, all of us in today's time who were baptized with the Holy Spirit, have the gift of prophecy also working through us from time to time. And then we must learn to discern which words are definitely from the Lord and which are not. At number four, let us then now end with what to do with prophetic words received from somebody. What should I do if somebody comes to me and says to me, the Lord said, I must give you this word. Well, number one, firstly, test it against anything the Lord himself has been dealing with you about in your own heart. If it confirms that, you know it is from the Lord. Because a true prophetic word in many instances will confirm something that the Lord has already been dealing with yourself 
in your time of devotion with Him or in your time of praise and worship, you start to experience the Lord picking your heart, the Holy Spirit quickening your spirit regarding a specific thing. And then a person comes to you and he says to you, the Lord tells me to tell you this and this and this. And you, you suddenly realize it is exactly what has been going on in your heart. Then you know that comes from the Lord because the Lord will confirm what he has put in your heart by somebody like that who also has the gift of prophecy flowing through him of her coming to you. But that person is not necessarily a prophet. He is just a believer or she is just a believer having the gift of prophecy flowing through him or through her in that moment because God wanted to confirm that thing in your heart. Secondly, if you are not sure whether that prophetic word is really from God, put it on a shelf, so to speak, and proceed with your normal life. As time goes by and you look back, you will then see whether those things which were said to you did come to pass or not. And so you will know whether it really was from God or not. Unfortunately, what some people do when they receive such a prophetic word from a prophet or a prophetess is that they nearly stop living because they start holding on to that prophetic word and waiting for that word to come into fulfillment. This actually in so many words means that that prophet or prophetess and the prophetic word they received become idols in the heart of such a person and therefore brings a block in their own lives and in their own spiritual lives. And when that word does not come into fulfillment over a period of time, guess what happens? They become angry with God and not with the prophet. And unfortunately, in many instances, they fall away from God instead of immediately cutting ties with that prophet who told them those lies in the first place. My brother and sister, this is what you need to do. You need to start to learn to discern. So if a person comes to you and he says, God said, I must tell you this. Say to him, I receive that word, I hear what you're saying, but I'm putting it on a shelf over here. And I'm going on with my life. And as you look back, you will see, oh yes, that thing that he said on that day, it came to pass on this day. This is where, where it was fulfilled. This is where it was fulfilled. This is where it was fulfilled. Then you can know that that person did speak through the mouth of the Lord. But if you look back and you say, ah, none of those things came to pass, then you know that was not a word which was spoken of God. But as I say, so many people, unfortunately, they nearly stop living. They receive that prophetic word and then that prophetic word becomes their everything. The word of the prophet. But the prophet said to me, the prophet test said to me, so I'm holding on to that word. So now that word does not come to pass. And then they fall away from God instead of falling away from that prophet and cutting the prophet out of their life. My brother and sister, we must test the prophets. But to be able to do that, we need to know our scriptures. We need to know what to do and how to do it. And I've explained it to you in a short way now. And I pray it will help you not to be made merchandise of anymore. That you will test any prophetic word that you receive in these end times against the word of God. And that you will be in a living relationship with a living God. Because Jesus is not a dead God. He said in Revelation 1 verse 17 and 18, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And all honor and glory goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you teach us to discern the truth from the lie. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will quicken the spirit of every person listening to this message. And Father, that you will give them more of the gift of discernment of spirits so that they will learn to discern when somebody gives them a word, whether it is really from you or whether it is contradictory to Scripture. Father, so that you can be glorified. And Lord Jesus, we know your coming is very close at hand because we see it in the fact that there are so many false prophets standing up and that very elect 
being deceived in many instances. So we see the fulfillment of biblical prophecies before our very eyes. So we keep on crying out, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Amen.